Chris Avina with American Outdoor News, and I'm here with my friend Nick Hoffman, the host of Nick's Wild Ride. Nick, thanks, thanks so much for coming on again. Hey, man, it's been a while. You know, we spoke, uh, I guess your show was kind of new at the time. If and I so remember right, yeah, yeah, if I remember right, it was the right when season one was coming out. And you're into season nine now. Yeah, so season nine is airing on Outdoor Channel. And, and that's still, when I say those words, especially considering my story and how and my journey to how I got into doing a television show in the first place, I, I just, it blows my mind every time that I say that, um, season nine. And we're already filming season 10. I mean, I'm, I'm headlong into filming season 10, 10 seasons of this show and, and, and uh, getting to go around the world and, and just explore history and culture and food while I hunt and and literally just systematically check my bucket list off. I mean, dude, life is good, you know? <laughs> what would you say makes your show different compared to the other ones? And, and I know what I see as uh, what your show is. Well, personally, I mean, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Personally, how do you feel your show is different? Well, I think there's a lot of ways that it's different. Um, and I think that's by design. When I first, I had no intention of of having an outdoor television show. I'm a country music artist, you know, I'm a fiddle player and a singer and, a, and I've always hunted and I've always traveled to hunt and I've always loved to travel to hunt, but I'm a, I'm a curious traveler. I, I've always been like that ever since I've, played music on the road and been on tour, I've always been the guy that goes and tries to find a local burger or the local museum or, or the, the, the dive bar with the beer, or I, I'm always asking people, Hey, tell me about the history of this place, you know? So when, when we started talking about doing Nick's wild ride, it was, it was, uh, it was just an extension of that. And I'm a big believer that authenticity is key, right? Like authenticity is, is the, the key to en entertainment really like long lasting entertainment anyway. And so I just, when you, when you see Nick's wild ride, you're just watching me doing what I would do anyway. You know, I, I'm going to, when I go yeah. somewhere, to hunt, I'm exploring local history and food and culture and music along the way. That's the basis of the show. But I think the coolest thing about it for me is that I'm because of the show, it's been a conduit for me to go to places that I probably only dreamed of. I mean, I'm a farm kid from Minnesota, right? Like I, the idea that I'd someday be hunting Marco Polo in Kyrgyzstan uh, or giant mule deer in Sonora, like the, these things are, these things are stuff that I would only dreamed about and only read about in magazines. So it doesn't really quite answer your question though. What, what, what is different about it? I think that is what's different about it. I think that the, the shows that I grew up watching and the shows that I still watch and the shows that I still love are a lot of whisper, whisper, point, point, shoot, shoot. And that's it. You know what I mean? In fact, so I kind of sometimes, I, I kind of sometimes envy my friends that have um, kind of more traditional hunting shows, if you will, because they show up, they hunt when they kill, they're done. Right. Yep. And for me, like if I go and film an episode, it might take me a week to kill. And then I've still got another week of filming to do, but that filming is fun. And it's, 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 I've had some of the most incredible experiences because of this show that I probably never would have had. So what's different about it? Everything really. I, I mean, it, there's still hunting, but uh, it's, it's all the other things. And I think that's for me, I get a lot of enjoyment out of the messages I get that say, Hey, your show is the only show that my wife will sit down on Friday night and watch with me. You know, the yeah. only hunting show that my whole family watches together. Um, things like that. It's because there is something for everybody in this show versus just just the hunter. And I'm trying really hard to make to to make a show that if you're not a hunter, you can still watch, and that and that um, that maybe it will help change perception of, of people that maybe just are stumbling upon it and see this show. And they're like, Oh, hunting's pretty cool. You know? Yep. So now in, in nine, 10 seasons, what stands out the most to you? I mean, you've had so many experiences and 
such a, a, a long span, what, what stands out to you? Well, I mean, when it comes to destinations, um, there are definitely some hunts that have stuck out. I just mentioned Kyrgyzstan. I mean, the culture of some of these places is what stands out to me. Hunting, I'll tell you one thing that I've, I've learned that definitely stands out is that hunting is universal. It's a universal language. Um, it's kind of like, you know, that feeling when it's getting close to opening day and you go to Walmart to maybe grab a pair of Huntworth gloves or something like that. And, 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 and you see another guy with a camo hat on it from, you know, checking out with his, with his wife or, or whatever, or anybody with camo. I, I don't mean to be like, you know, guy yeah. girl about it, but it's like you, you see him and you kind of give him that, that knowing look like, Hey man, you're in the club. You know what yep. I mean? That's the that, nod. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's like, Hey man, I, you know, I don't know you, but you know, we're, we'd probably be friends. That language is universal. Um, people that hunt, and people that love the outdoors, even people that fish, you know, it's like all this stuff. There is a commonality amongst us all, a common thread, a common blood that runs through our veins that instantly connects people. And like I mentioned, Kurdistan, I couldn't speak the language, obviously. Um, I, we hardly could share any words um, while we were there. I had a guy there that was was a guy that could speak, that spoke English and helped translate a little bit. But the guys that I was hunting with, the outfitters, we were instantly bonded by our love of the outdoors, by our love of the journey, by our love of the of the hunt, by our love of the adventure. And, and that is something I've noticed. From Africa to Alaska, when you show up in a hunting camp, you're already surrounded by friends and you don't know anyone. You know what I mean? And I've, yeah. I've always loved that. Um, you know, I've always kind of likened the outdoors to, uh, going to church, you know, anybody, you know, if it's any kind of church, that's worth its salt. You can walk, anybody can walk in the front door and be welcome with open arms. Right. Yes. I feel like that's what most hunting lodges are like. I feel like that's what most hunting camps are like that. Hey, I don't know you. And maybe we have different politics or maybe we have different religion or maybe we have whatever, but Hey, we have this one thing in common and boy, is it, is it awesome? You know? And so I think that's something that stood out to me for sure. Yeah. I think, um, hunting camp is a big part of the hunting experience. It just Absolutely. brings people together. It's a bonding experience and yep. memories go on. Yeah, now, absolutely. You, you've had a pretty diverse musical career. Um, how has your musical background um, influenced hosting Nick's Wild Ride? You know, it's, that's a really good question. Um, I think that one, one way that my musical career has, has helped me, prepare me to be um, this television host, if you will, which I still don't view myself as a television host. <laughs> I, 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 do, I do kind of feel like, like this show just kind of follows me around doing what I'm going to do anyway. But I think the one way that it, it, it prepared me for it is, um, is the, the, the entertainment value side of things. I, I try to make my show entertaining. And yeah. I think that from a life, a, literally an entire life of being on stage from, from full on theater shows to playing in bar bands and playing in stadiums full of 60,000 people, I, I feel like I've, I've gained a sense of, of timing and entertainment and, and, and how, how to kind of um, provide something that people enjoy seeing and makes them happy, you know? And, and that's my goal. Anthony Bourdain is my, like, kind of my hero. This show is like very much Anthony Bourdain inspired, right? God rest his soul. And, but the difference between what I do in Bourdain is is that I'm a little more tongue in cheek, a little more self deprecating, a little more. Look, I'm not the expert. I'm gonna leave yeah. the when it comes to hunting. I, I'm gonna leave the being the expert to the experts. You know, I'm just a guy out there um, who's lucky enough to get to go to these cool places, and boy, am I enjoying it. You know, so <clears throat> to what I've learned through the music business is again, like I said earlier authenticity man it's it uh, just be yourself 
And yep. sometimes, sometimes that means being really wacky. Sometimes that means being a little too serious. The, the, that's who I am. Sometimes a little wacky and sometimes I'm way too intense, you know? And I think you see all that come through in the show. And um, I also, I love a cold beer and, and I love a, a hot meal uh, a home cooked meal. I love a good burger. Like all these things, I'm not afraid to show that. You know, if I if I want a cold beer after a hunt, after the hunt, obviously, I'm not afraid to show that on camera. And sometimes that's that's you know that's turned a few people off. You know, oh, you shouldn't be showing alcohol. You should be man. That's that's real, and that's who I am. And that doesn't mean that that's who you have to be. Yeah, but that's who I am. And so I think that that's another thing I learned through the years in the music business is just be yourself. People will resonate and you can't please everyone. You know what I mean? You, you have yep. to make the product you make. And, and then, uh, and then from there, people will resonate to it. I heard a, there's a famous uh, music producer, Rick Rubin, who has produced, you know, just, I won't even go down the list, but I mean, just the biggest of the big stuff in, in his career. And there's a great quote that says that um, he doesn't care about what the audience likes. What, what he cares about is making music that feels good and sounds good to him. And, and then naturally, if it's good enough, then other people are going to like it, but not everybody's going to like it. You know, not everybody, it's like Bob Dylan versus the Stones, right? Or, or on Beatles versus the Stones. They're very, very different things. And usually you get people that are a big Stones fan or big Beatles fans. But do you think the Stones were worried about whether or not people were going to like it? No. I, no. I, believe that it's authenticity go out and do what you want and 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 the rest will the rest will fall into place i'm not making television for for everyone i'm making television for me that i hope you like you know yeah it's that's funny you say that as, as spending somebody who spends so much time in the outdoors how has nature and the outdoors influenced your creativity not only for the show but in your songwriting yeah, it's in every way, shape and form. I mean, there's not a single ounce of my life that isn't affected by the outdoors. And and it goes, there's lots of different levels to that statement, but I didn't grow up in a hunting family. So nobody in my family hunted. My dad had dabbled with a little bit of hunting when he was, a, you know, a teenager. Um, my, my grandpa, I think, hunted a little bit as well. But like nobody in my family hunted. In fact, when I started showing interest in hunting, my I think my mom thought she spawned a gremlin. You know, she's she you know, she just didn't get it, you know. And but I was always really interested in it. And and I know now looking back at it, that started with me just wanting to be outside at the farm, you know, and and, and it started with a, me trying to catch snakes and and follow deer tracks through the woods. I remember one time I tried to sneak up to a, a doe in the a sleeping doe in the woods. And I got like, just, I, I mean, I, 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 either if I didn't touch her, I almost touch her. And it took me like two hours and I'm just, now I realized that was hunting. You know, I yep. was seven, eight, nine years old, just off in the back behind, in the backyard behind our house. And that was hunting. I had this in my blood. I really believe that some people are wired to be hunters and some people are wired to be gatherers. I was one of these people that has always paid attention to nature. I was always looking at the birds in the sky and curious about the worms that were underneath the board that you'd pick up. And, and I was just fascinated by all that. So now fast forward to, uh, you know, a guy who got introduced to hunting through a neighbor and, and, be, and has become this quote unquote professional hunter or whatever you want to call it. That's a, that there's a huge journey in there and all of it has been inspired by my love of animals and my love of nature. And that's an oxymoron, right? Like the idea that hunters love animals, um, you yeah. know, that, that people, wow, well, you're a killer. Sure. I, I, I go out and I, I kill something and fill my freezer and help manage populations and all these, these, you know, this, the typical things that we all say, but I gotta be honest with you. Killing is not my, my, the, I don't like the killing. I like the hunting, but I, there's not a single animal that I've ever walked up to from a coyote to a hog to a deer to a duck that I don't hold and touch and, and feel a tinge of, of I'm not going to say remorse, but I will say sadness, you know, and 
and I think that that I think there's there's an element um, of respect is the is the answer. You know, I yeah. think that is the word. I, I I respect these animals and I love animals. I mean, a great example is last night in the barn here. My wife, there was a there's a possum that's been eating all our cat food and we think might have rabies. We're not sure. It's like it's pretty looks kind of sick, and and. I went out and my wife was like, Hey, that possum's in the, in the, <laughs> in there, uh, right now, you better go, better go shoot it. And I just, a pit in my stomach just, just hit me. It's like, I don't want to go kill a possum. You know what I mean? Uh, like there's some hunters out there who'd be like, yeah, woohoo. That's not me. I, I, I don't, yeah. I don't want to just go kill something to kill it. Luckily for me, the, I didn't find the possum. So I came in and I didn't have, <laughs> didn't have to do it. It's not that I won't. It's it's all good. I've done that a thousand times, but yep. you know, I'm a hunter and sure, I guess by definition that makes me a killer, but I'm not a killer. I'm a hunter, you know? Yeah. There's a difference. You know, I love my dog. I love pets. I love, you know, to be around animals. Mm -hmm. Taking a deer or an elk or whatever we're hunting is a means to an end. Yeah. For me, it's a spiritual thing. It really is. I, I, and I really, I really feel a, a spiritual connection to the animals that we hunt. And I know, again, that sounds like an oxymoron, but I do. And it's a, it's an exercise in spirituality for me always has been. And, um, you know, there, there's deer in the backyard every single night. And I love to just sit with a beer and watch them. I love that. I love that so much, but I'd be lying if I said that I don't every once in a while when they're, you know, sitting there being like, okay, where would I put the arrow? <laughs> you know, <what> I mean? <laughs> so, you know, it, 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 I'm, I'm, um, like I said, it's an oxymoron. So it, it's, it's a, a contradiction in terms for sure. You know? Yep. Now, are there any upcoming collaborations musically and uh, professionally through the show uh, that's, upcoming that you can divulge yeah i've got a brand new album a brand new solo album coming out soon um that i'm really excited about and um it's been in the can for several years and i just haven't felt like it was ready to put out but it's uh it's time and i think that's going to be coming out here right towards the end of the year um so i'm really excited about that there's a couple episodes coming out on, in the new season that have me singing some cool songs around the campfire. Um, and I've got a collaboration with my, my wife, Natalie Murphy, who, um, oh, nice. who's got a new couple new songs coming out. Uh, one of them that I'm featured on, I just did a collaboration with my buddy, Chris Cruzy, who was on the voice, um, that you can find out now it's called crushing cans. And it's about, you know, just a bunch of guys getting together to drink some beer around the campfire and, and kind of, uh, get over a breakup, you know, and, uh, he and I are featured together on that and I'm singing and playing a bunch of fiddles. You can go find that right now. Chris Cruzy, K R O E Z E. He's incredible. Um, so yeah, I've got a lot of fun music stuff, uh, coming out and, and, um, and you know, it's, it's hard. It's hard to find the balance between a show that keeps me going all around the world all year. So my hunting season isn't just right now in the fall. It's it's year round because like in, you know, March I'm going to Argentina for water buffalo, you know, and then you find yourself Gosh. in, you know, in April and May you you find yourself in like Australia or New Zealand or 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 Europe, you know, there's all sorts of different seasons that are different than here, you know. And I usually find myself in Africa at least once a year you know, in different areas, so it's like I'm, you know, I'm going pretty wide open all year, all year round. And then of course you got Turkey season in there and yeah. it's like, it's, it's a, I'm not complaining though, man. I, like I said, I'm just checking off my bucket list. It's beautiful. And that list just keeps getting bigger. You check mm -hmm. off one and you add two more. You know, it's hard to, it's hard to figure, believe it, but like in the last 10 years, since I started fil filming these nine seasons, um, I've been on nearly 150 plus adventures all over the world. And man, it doesn't feel like that. It doesn't feel like 150. It feels like two years and 10 trips. Like it's just gone by in the blink of an eye. And it's, it's not until I go and I see the mounts on the wall and I look at them 
and I start to see how many of them there are and, and the different and, and every one of them a memory, you know, and when I, when I look through my phone, when I'm searching for a photo and, and it's just one cool adventure after the other. Uh, um, when I look through my Instagram, you know, and I, and I, I, I just scroll through it every once in a while. And then like, wow, look at all this stuff that I've gotten to do. How cool is that? And you're just literally looking at a dude that's living his wildest dreams. Uh, you know, as a guy that grew up, like I said, reading Field and Stream and watching Jackie Bushman and Dave Watson on TV, I, I don't know. I, it's still just pinch myself like this is what I get to do for a living. And I don't take it for granted for yep. a second. For a second, I don't take a single ounce of this for granted. I'm living. I wake up every day. I'm a little more sore than I used to be when I wake up, but I I, I wake up and just like, here we go. Let's do it. You know, I'm I'm loving it, and I'm fully yeah. aware that it's not always going to be like this. You know, someday I'm going to be uh, looking back through those photo albums. You know, remember and when. You know, and so I'm I'm trying to be as present and in the moment as possible because um, this is special what I'm experiencing right now. It really is. Well, having a trophy room like that, every mount and piece of taxidermy is really a memory that you physically have in front of you that you can look at and actually remember that hunt and who you were with and how you did it and what you went through. Yep. The whole thing comes back. Absolutely. That's something that most people that, that, that don't hunt um, can't really understand, you know, I think my wife gets it, but like the other day I was, some people came over and I had, there's some mounts hanging in my shop and I was, I was just kind of staring at one of them and, 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 uh, and she kind of made some kind of comment that I was like, you know, like kind of bragging on myself in my head. And I'm like, no, I was picturing it coming in and how much I shook and my heart pounding and all these things. And it really does. They're, they're time capsules. And, um, and that's the stuff that people that don't hunt can't really understand what, why, and, 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 and the how and the, and the feelings and that, that, again, that spirituality behind it. It's like, man, these are, they're, they're, they're monster moments in my life, you know? And so I, I, I love tax. I love the art of taxidermy too. I love a great taxidermist's work and seeing what they do and, and having all those mounts for me is a, isn't it's an honor you know I, I i like to do that that deer back there is not my biggest deer but it's it's the only one that's up in our house and it's because that that deer that deer deserves that honor and that's a, a whole nother story behind that but like he's got a place of honor there not because he's the biggest but because he's he just deserves it i'll just leave it there you know that's awesome so yeah. what can we expect this year <laughs> Uh, for, season, for season nine, it's a, uh, it's pretty crazy, man. It's a, it's all over the map. I mean, everything from elk in Colorado to quail in Mississippi, where I meet this incredible guy named Jimmy Bryan, who is, you know, do, doing incredible conservation work and is putting his money where his mouth is to bring his, ha his family habitat back to the way it was in the fifties and sixties, uh, incredible stuff there. Uh, I go to Mexico to finish my world Turkey slam and shoot an oscillated Turkey. I'm, I go to Spain to finish up my Spanish slam, which is all the seven indigenous animals of Spain. Uh, I go to New Zealand to hunt with a bow for the first time. So I've been to New Zealand before, but I always hunted with a rifle, um, deer at our place in Kentucky. I mean, it just, it, it just goes on and on. It's not hard if you say it fast, right? Like, Oh, uh, you know, <laughs> you do this, do that. But man, I mean, this year alone, I will have been gone well over 200 days, probably pushing 250 days of the year away from home, away from wow. my family, away from everything. And that's the hard part. I mean, I love what I do, but, but on the same token, um, it's, it's, I'd be lying if I said, it's not hard to be gone, but you know, someday I'll be looking back at it going, that's pretty cool. I'm glad I did that. Yep. Well, I appreciate you taking the time. I'm sorry my Wi-Fi is kind of spotty here today. <laughs> ah, no but, problem. Um, I look forward to seeing you at uh, the shows this season. And, uh, you know, let's, let's connect again real soon. Absolutely, man. Thanks for having me. And thanks for doing what you're doing. And uh, flying, 
flying the flag for all of us hunters, man. We appreciate you. We do what we need to do. <laughs> all right, man. Thanks again. No problem. See you.